Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Mech Lab, where we try to be a better mech commander every day. Today we're going to be going over an advanced tactic that you should be using in all of your Battletech games in order to get more wins. And the tactic is armor sharing. Now, what I mean by armor sharing is that each individual unit should be giving up its armor in order to protect other more damaged units. And damaged units should be pulling back from the main fight, taking cover, or running very fast, or using jump jets to get a high TMM. So that it's more difficult for the enemy to hit them and deliver more damage to their damaged components. So I've set up two lances here with some elite piloting values to make up the battle value. Princess has about 100 more battle value than I do, but that's going to be just fine. We have a sort of mid-range brawler here with the Thunderbolt 10M mid-range fighter, decent mobility with the 464 movement. We've got the Penetrator, one of my favorite mechs ever, more of a real close range specialist. This thing just gets in with the pulse lasers and blasts the crap out of you. We have the Shadowhawk 9D, sort of a, a mixed range unit. It can fight from medium range with the AC5 and MMLs, but it really wants to get in there and use the SRMs and medium pulse laser to maximum effect. And then we've got a Falcon, which is just a long or short range fighter. It's got a medium pulse laser and medium laser for up close, and an ER large laser for long range. It's pretty cheap on battle value, kind of just a filler unit or a flanker or a light hunter. That's kind of what its role is in this lance. I've given Princess a slower list. It's still got some mobility. It's got a, a Vulcan as a light hunter and a Grasshopper 5N as sort of a heavy cavalry unit, but really they've got a, a solid firing line here. Gauss Rifle, double heavy PPC, and then triple PPC with the awesome 8Q. Plenty of armor back here, so what we're going to have to do is either isolate these units as they come towards us, or we're going to have to bum rush the back line and try and bring these units down as quickly as we can with our efficient close range weapons. Alrighty, so here's our board. We're going to deploy the Falcon. Oh, it looks like he's got the Grasshopper way up there in the north. So maybe we will try and do the isolation tactic that I talked about. We'll try and just go for the Vulcan. Alright, okay, so he's he's gone for a split. Two units in the north, two units sort of towards the center south. And my guess is that he's probably going to move and try and take these forests. Now let's go for a flank with the Shadowhawk here. Okay, beginning of turn two, no shots scored on either side. Pretty predictable outcome here. We're just, you know, moving our battle line in. The Falcon has jumped into the forest to keep that TMM high so that the tougher units up here can take the fire for the Falcon, which has significantly less armor. And the Shadowhawk is going to be in, you know, spitting distance of that awesome medium range. So I think we're just going to take cover in this forest here so that it can start taking some pot shots. Um, my opponent has his mech split up, meaning that my entire lance basically is able to engage the awesome, while his two slower mechs up here can't even contribute to the fight really. So we're trading some shots here, there's some damage being taken on both sides. The awesome is taking the brunt of it, but as you can see, he fired back at the Shadowhawk, who didn't have the best TMM. It was pretty much equivalent to the Penetrator and the Thunderbolt. I think that this is actually probably a pretty smart move by my opponent try and hit the unit that is going to be able to retreat and still contribute to the fight, that has less armor and that has less long-range firepower, but more mobility. This discourages the Shadowhawk from moving in and using its close-range weapons really effectively, because now it's taken some damage. My left torso and center torso are pretty torn up now. Thunderbolt's starting to get a little hot, so to take some heat off of the Shadowhawk, I'm going to move it forward, lower its overall heat for the turn, still get a little bit of TMMs, and we're going to march the penetrator right into the enemy's teeth. I'm guessing the awesome is probably going to fall back a little. I know that I want the Shadowhawk to get in there and use its SRMs as soon as possible, so we're just going to run that bad boy right in. So my opponent is still waddling towards me with his other units. If your opponent gives you a chance to isolate units and engage with your full lance against just a couple of his, always take it. We have a choice here with the penetrator between taking medium pulse lasers on 9 or the ER larges on 7s. I'm going to go for for the medium pulse lasers. It's a lot more raw damage. 
All right, we got a little lucky here. Didn't get that uh, through armor critical hit us. And we've started stripping all the armor off of the awesome, really isolating it, doing a lot of damage. We crit the gyro, which has knocked the prone. And we really pushed the heat on the thunderbolt. It's sitting at 11 heat now, but it was worth it just to really hit this awesome as hard as we possibly can. And again, I think that my opponent made a smart move here by firing all of the PPCs at the Falcon. I just got really lucky. That Falcon should probably have its leg snapped off or something like that because you know sixes against a vulnerable light mech is really good odds. I would have done the same thing. And the SRMs do their job and get a couple of hits, take out a few heat sinks and a PPC. That was actually insane dice luck on this turn for me, but that's battle deck. And this is why I always like to make piloting a priority on my mechs. We kick the crap out of that Vulcan. You can see now things are starting to heat up pretty heavily. Now, my opponent moved the Vulcan last, which was, again, a good move on Princess's part, but it has given me the ability to get the Falcon in and deliver probably some devastating back shots. Princess kind of just failed on the awesome, unfortunately, as well. I am getting kind of lucky with the dice rolls here. My opponent's really just given me such a huge boom by splitting up his forces. It really has completely just changed the tide of the match. As Marauder whiffs due to the range and forest in the way, we rip open the Vulcan's back armor, do a good chunk to the Grasshopper with the heavy PPC on the Thunderbolt, and the Thunderbolt is also now cooling off so that I've got better shots for next turn. Really, you saw that the Penetrator was out of line of sight of the two long-range mechs here, and that was by design. We left the Thunderbolt back here so that it would get shot. I was hoping the Marauder would go for the Thunderbolt as well, uh, but it went for the Falcon instead. Not a big deal. The Thunderbolt, between being harassed by the Vulcan and taking fire constantly from the Awesome and the Marauder, starting to get worn down a little bit. It's still pretty good on armor, so it can take another turn of fire, I think, before it's going to really start having any problems. So I think the move this turn is to start heading for this heavy woods here so that it can take cover. Meanwhile, the Penetrator and the Shadowhawk, who are both still reasonably quite armored, are just going to go straight into the enemy enemy's teeth. Oh, it looks like the awesome knocked itself out. <laughs> That's unfortunate for them. Moving the penetrator in and purposely taking a fairly low TMM, but still taking a position where it can kick the immobilized awesome. And with all the big weapons around, the falcon has taken cover so that it hopefully doesn't get shot at. And the grasshopper has given us a prime opportunity to get behind it with the shadowhawk and kick the crap out of it. The princess has been pretty relentless with jumping and firing all of its lasers. I, I wouldn't recommend going this hot with the vulcan. It has pretty good ground movement, so just use your movement more tactically so the you can preserve heat and get better shots. Also conserving heat on the Thunderbolt because I don't have great shots this turn. As planned, the Penetrator has started to take damage for me. It unfortunately took 30 damage to the same location, which is not fantastic, but it's Battletech. Dice happen. We're kind of whiffing on our return fire here, but no big deal. We got some good kicks back. Princess decided to give me the Marauder's back arc, so I decided I would go after that this turn. See if we can get a knockdown and strip most of the armor off of it. The return fire on our Falcon has ripped its weapons off here but it's still an excellent little kick bot. And the cover from the forest really helped us. The Shadowhawk did take a pretty big beating from the Grasshopper. I'm going to have to try and get away from it next turn. I'm in a really good position to jump into this heavy woods and get away from that Grasshopper. Things are really going just as I hoped. We've got our damage kind of spread out amongst all three of our units. I've lost initiative this turn, so I'm just going to try and deny my enemy any good shots with the Marauder because everything's pretty hurt. That's kind of what I expected the Marauder to do, but with minimum range, he's actually not going to have great shots on that Shadowhawk. I think this turn we'll try and deal with that Vulcan finally using the Falcon. And as expected, the Marauder has missed everything. The Penetrator conserved some heat since I was hitting on eights. And hey, look at that. Our strategy worked. We kind of just denied good shots to our enemy and took shots of opportunity. The Grasshopper made an unfortunate piloting fail. And the melee phase went in our favor as well. This is an interesting situation because our Penetrator has taken so much damage to its right torso that any big hit is going to knock it off. Our Thunderbolt, on the other hand, and can take a couple of hits in almost any location. So the Thunderbolt is actually the unit that we want to run at the enemy this turn and take the shots. So we're going to put him out as bait. Excuse me, could I just distract you for a brief second? Huh? This Vulcan is hanging on by a thread, so we really need to pin him down. I'm going to leave our last turn to the Falcon so that he can get on top of the Vulcan. We're going to keep the Penetrator outside of the Marauder's firing arc with as good a cover as possible. And since the Grasshopper has decided to make itself an easy target, we're just going to focus fire that this turn, especially considering the significant amount of armor that the Marauder still has compared to the Grasshopper. 
The Falcon was pretty exposed and it's gotten pretty messed up, but it has taken some pressure off of our Thunderbolt. And hey, look at that. The high target numbers for the Grasshopper really made it difficult for the enemy to hit me. Both the Grasshopper and the Falcon are now prone, can't really do very much. They're essentially target dummies at this one. Since my Falcon couldn't go anywhere, I used it as an initiative sink and the enemy has obviously done the same. Oh, the Grasshopper is knocked out as well. Okay, that works out really well for us, but uh, I do feel a little bit bad for, for the AI at this point. A very overheated Vulcan that's stripped of armor and a marauder against three heavy mechs. Ah, uh, I see. He tried to get up and then knock himself out. This is the wrong call, but Princess will pretty much always target the thing that has the best chance to hit, and I'm in minimum range of all of the weapons. The Vulcan is prone with an arm destroyed, so it literally can't fire weapons or do anything. It's pretty much useless. Our dice aren't doing super are hot, but we do score a head hit. We get an unfortunate kick miss, and our Thunderbolt's leg is hanging on by a thread. The Marauder is prone now, which means that it can't jump anywhere, but I'm pretty sure Princess is going to try and stand up. So we're going to put the unit that doesn't really need to worry about damage so much right in front of him. Princess did manage to stand up, so let's get behind him. And he's run the Vulcan over, and I really want that thing gone, so we're going to go and take it out with the Pentry. And again, our Falcon is just taking shots for us, and the Falcon is still acting as a fire magnet. I'm totally okay with that. A real opponent definitely wouldn't do this. Our dice are not being too kind once again, and Princess doesn't fall out this time. Princess's legs are looking mighty thin, but we miss our kicks. Oh dear, the grasshopper's back up. That's a problem. Because the grasshopper's right torso is open, I'm gonna go down here with the shadow hog and get no TMM and hopefully have him get focused because he still has plenty of armor. And we're just bouncing around once again, trying to deny good shots. And the Vulcan has opted to run away. I don't know if that's smart or not, but it's what it is. Because we're hitting the grasshopper on nines, we're gonna conserve some heat. And hey, that was scary for the shadow hog, but the strategy has worked. It could have taken a shot to the right torso. So, the left torso, maybe not so much. <laughs> But pretty much anywhere other than the left torso would have been fine. In response, we fire back at the grasshopper. And hey, look at that. We're in the right arc, so we hit the right torso and destroyed it. And transferred a bunch of damage to the CT, which crit the gyro. Oh, and a lucky head hit has destroyed the marauder. Well, I would say that concludes our lesson today, everyone. Hopefully this match has shown you the power of staying together and using armor sharing in order to keep your mechs healthy. Thanks for watching, everyone. Please share the content with your fellow mech warriors. Leave a like and a comment. And subscribe for more Battletech tips and gaming content. Have a great day, everyone.